Welcome to the Carwale channel and thanks for watching my previous videos. Think Tata Harrier and the first thing that comes to your mind is a true blue SUV with great road presence and these gorgeous curves. Come 2020 and the Tata Harrier has now more features, has got a BS6 diesel engine with an automatic transmission and because of that it now rivals the Seltos, Compass and the Creta. Before we go ahead with this review, please do like, share and subscribe to our videos if you like watching us and do remember to leave your comments below. So be it the towering bonnet with the piercing DRLs or even the headlamps which are housed in these Airdam lookalikes, the nose of the Harrier is pretty wicked. And this flows on to a rather rugged side profile, complete with side cladding, lots of clearance and these attractive wheels. It doesn't end there. A blacked out roof can be seen smoothly blending the roof to the tail portion with the signature arrow tail lamps that sport snazzy LED internals. These slender tail lamps are quite the visual treat as they flow seamlessly onto either ends thanks to some foxy, glossy black trim. Again, wicked. So the eye-catching design continues in the 2020 model as well. Uh, the additions being the electrically adjustable driver's seat, the aerodynamic uh, door mirror which also helps in the visibility out of the A-pillar, the auto-dimming uh, internal rear view mirror, and the large panorama sunroof. The things that we didn't like though uh, are basically the fit and finish and quality in some areas. Like you can see these cuts over here, they can be a little sharp, uh, especially around this section uh, where it holds the uh, adjustment to the door mirrors. Plus, uh, you know, this little panel that joins onto the dash, it's misaligned. It, it could have also had the same uh, trim which is used over here, the soft touch could have been extended on this. Small things, but it would have really helped. Uh, and in addition to that, um, some aesthetics. Uh, these buttons are very large and they're very good to use on the go, but they look a little uh, odd being flat. It could have been designed in such a way with a little more flair. Otherwise, this cabin is a nice place to be in. There's a beautiful flowing design from the door pads onto the layered dash. Tata has done a good job by lending a premium feel by splashing some oak wood colored trim all across with the oak wood trim and matching leather upholstery. Now overall, although quality levels are improved over the previous car, we still find it a shade below segment rivals such as the Jeep Compass. Visibility from the driver's seat is extremely good in the Harrier and that's mainly because of the large glass area and the appropriately positioned door mirror. You also have height adjustable driver seat uh, and a steering that adjusts for both rake and reach. Some of our viewers also wanted us to check out the headlight performance and we checked it last night. It's got a very strong beam that lights up the road and in addition to that it's also got the cornering lights. The Harrier is a spacious SUV. There's generous legroom, headroom and shoulder room. These leather seats in particular are perfect for me. They have just the right amount of lateral support, lumbar support and even some adequate shoulder support. The only thing lacking is some thigh support. The party piece in the Harrier has to be the trendy floating island base that holds the touchscreen infotainment system, aircon vents and buttons to the car's functions. After using it for three days, I have to admit that it could do with a bigger screen and a faster chip for better processing speeds. So there's Android Auto and Apple CarPlay along with nine JBL speakers with an amplifier. It certainly makes your track sound good. As for stowage, there's a small one ahead of the gear lever that can get tricky to use if you plug in your phone cable. Then there are the cup holders behind the gear shifter, the center armrest behind it and more in the deep door pads and glove box. So I've adjusted the front seats as per my driving position and as you can see there's lots of legroom, ample footroom. Um, there's uh, just the right amount of thigh support and lots of headroom as well. The backrest angle is not adjustable but it's just the right angle if you can see. Uh, there's lots of shoulder room, lots of space for the middle passenger as well and the cushioning is also favourable, you can actually sit in the middle. Uh, and uh, this uh, tunnel is also short so it doesn't obstruct. 
Coming on to this side, uh, we'll talk about the cubby spaces. There's a nice, unique double-decker cubby space over here, two layers. Uh, and in addition to that, you have this deep center console space. You can also have some stuff that you can put in here. Plus two cup holders over here. If there's anything that we didn't like about this particular space, is the fact that this window line is a little high and it's a little raked, so it obstructs the view outside. On the whole, the Harrier is also an attractive package because it is more spacious than the Seltos, Compass and Creta. And lastly, in terms of safety features, all variants have got ESP, 6 airbags, hill descent control, electronic traction and stability control, hill hold, corner stability control, off-road ABS and the rear parking sensors with a camera, to name a few. On to the boot. Now, as you can see, there's enough space for at least two to three medium-sized suitcases, along with some soft bags at most. But in addition to that, you also have a little secret compartment that you can use in case the wife decides to use all of this. And if this is not enough, you can drop these almost flat, and this should be able to take care of everything. To make the Harrier BS6 compliant, the 2-litre diesel motor was given an additional 28 bhp approximately. So that makes the total uh, power output 168 bhp approximately. But the torque output remains the same at 350 newton meters. This we have here is the automatic transmission. So it's a 6-speed gearbox which is a torque converter gearbox. And upon cranking the engine, those who are familiar with the older Harrier will appreciate the fact that this one has a lot less NVH. However, at the same time, you can always hear the engine in the background. Keen on knowing how this automatic felt to drive, I slotted the gear shift into D and released the brakes. The Harrier crept ahead progressively, after which, as I applied some throttle, it nudged ahead smoothly and purposefully. I immediately appreciated how the six-speed automatic torque converter unit did a good job of sensing the throttle input to provide a linear power delivery. So on the go, you'll notice that there's a nice surge after 1,500 RPM, and then it pulls cleanly till 4,600 RPM. Now, it only gets vocal once you cross 3,500 RPM, but I don't see the necessity for that. It's just totally unnecessary. As for the shifts, they're actioned seamlessly and actually facilitates driving this automatic all day long without breaking a sweat. And since autos are all about convenience, there's no need for constant braking or slotting into a lower gear while going downhill, since it holds a favorable RPM to prevent freewheeling or coasting. What's more, we admire the stress-free nature of the motor when we glanced at the rev clock to see it managing under 2000 RPM at over 100 km per hour. Going ahead, slotting into manual mode, Sport drive mode activated. summons the sport mode, so the responses are much quicker. Now, we haven't tested any of the Harrier's automatic diesel options in the market, However, from what you can see on the screen, a sub 10 seconds 0 to 100 says a lot for an SUV this size. And add to that, the acceleration and kickdown, talking about the 20 to 80 and the 40 to 100, are also quite quick. So that's uh, an indication of how exciting your overtaking is going to be. All you need to do now is feather the throttle for the Harrier to ride the torque curve and cover ground like an aerial combat vehicle. And if you ever miss upshifting yourself, the system will automatically upshift for you at about 3600 RPM to save the gearbox. But having said that, city mode is more than what you'll ever need as it delivers enough response for most driving circumstances. And for those who are low on fuel, Eco with its relaxed responses does the job. Some viewers asked us to reveal the instantaneous FE, so here it is. In the city, it gave us 11.7 and on the highway, it gave us 17.6. In terms of ride, the strong suspension setup feels indestructible even when you plow through our road hurdles. 
Sure, the ride is taut at lower speeds, but as you venture into three-digit ones, the Harrier simply decimates everything that our Indian roads can throw at it. Add to that a ground clearance of over 200 mm, and you can actually miss spotting a speed breaker like we did many a time and get away with it unscathed. Plus, NVH is quite favorable. Our decibel recording app recorded between 65 and 76 decibels and 79 decibels when it went over a huge pothole. Let's get on to the steering now. Uh, this particular one has a little more than two and a half turns from lock to lock. Now the response is favorable, but what's nice is the progression of the center. So these two uh, traits coupled with the heft of the steering, it's not too light and not too heavy. It makes maneuvering the Harrier within the city uh, very ideal. Now some of our viewers also wanted us to test the Harrier on a ramp, like a mall parking. So we were able to do that and uh, the performance uh, is very responsive on a ramp, the inclination as well. And uh, when you go off the throttle, it comes to a very slow halt and does not roll back. So that's good. This also goes for driving on hilly terrains at an inclination, which is also a breeze. We have to admit that this monocoque with Land Rover underpinnings lends it clean handling manners with minimum roll. At the same time, this is a front wheel drive, so we didn't do any serious off-roading. But the ESP terrain modes such as normal, rough and wet come handy as the system feeds just the right amount of torque as per the mode selected. The approach angle is also reasonable, so you don't have to be paranoid about the more than regular obstacles. What dampens the experience in the Harrier is the fact that um, the fit and finish and the quality in some areas could have been much better. Plus, uh, I felt that it needed height adjustable seat belts and a larger infotainment screen with snappier frame rates. Uh, but what really works for the Harrier is the fact that it's got immense road presence. It's got a comfortable and spacious interior, lots of power on tap, and it's got bullying dynamics as well. While the top of the line XZA Plus costs around 25 lakhs on the road Mumbai, it's cheaper than the Compass, but it is a few lakhs more expensive than the Seltos and the Creta. But leave all that aside. Just imagine the Fast and Furious sequel is coming to India to shoot and if there's any SUV that can really go up to that for a shoot it has to be the made in India Harrier. Hats off to Tata Motors and I'll see you in the next video.